Hello everyone, um, I'm just going to be continuing the Tesla valve case that I was working on. Or I have to change directory into it, but Tesla valve. Alright, so if we take a look at our file structure, we don't have initial conditions which belong in zero. We don't have FE schemes or FE solutions, and we don't have uh, transport properties which contains our viscosity, and if you have a more complicated uh, simulation, all your different fluid properties. So first of all, I'm seeing this weird control dick dot save. So I'm going to remove that. So rm system control dick dot save. Bye bye. So whenever you're starting a new uh, open foam case, refer to the tutorials. So if we want to use ICO foam on the simulation, we'll go to Foam tutorials, incompressible, slash ICO foam. And these are the different cases that we can take inspiration from. Um, we've got cavity and elbow. Cavity is a, it's just a square. There's no inlet, there's no outlet. It's just a, mo it's a lid driven cavity uh, case. So that's not really gonna work for us. Elbow though, that's a, that's a pipe flow case. So that's relatively similar to what our Tesla valve is doing. So we're going to copy the folder, so cp-r, or I should just be doing up arrow, delete ls, cp, recursive, copy the whole directory, icofoam slash elbow. We're going to put that in one directory above our Tesla valve. So ls dot dot, we'll see that we have our elbow. Now we can copy the necessary files. So we're going to copy the whole zero directory from elbow, so dot dot slash elbow slash zero into our Tesla valve directory. We're going to copy dot dot slash elbow slash constant transport properties into dot slash constant. And then we're going to copy dot dot slash elbow system control dict as well as dot dot slash elbow system f anything starting with fv so that's fv asterisk we're going to put that into dot slash system so if we tree again we'll see that we have control dict we have fv schemes and solutions we've got transport properties as well as our zero directory all right so for the next part we're going to want to know our patch names so um, we can go into uh, system surface features, or system surface features. We have front and back. <laughs> we have inlet, <coughs> excuse me. We've got outlet and wall. So we need all of those to be present within our uh, initial condition files. So zero U, we'll start with that. Internal field that tells us we want to initialize the field to be the velocity field to be zero, which is good. I'm just going to edit these names so that they reflect what I have in my simulation. So we'll make this front and back. Front and back is just a wall. Um, I was trying to make this 2D, but snappy hex mesh is not kind in dealing with uh, 2D simulations. So. That's no slip. We'll change this to be our inlet. I messed up my geometry orientation, so this uh, it's going to be a minus one rather than a positive one. So minus one, then our outlet. We're going to change this from zero gradient to inlet outlet just because it reflects our uh, use case a bit more accurately. So inlet outlet, inlet value, uniform, zero, 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 and then value, uniform, zero, zero, zero. All these other patch names are irrelevant, so we're going to delete them. They're not part of my simulation. We have everything we need there. So we'll save that and exit and then go on to pressure. 
and basically do the same thing. Our wall is going to be zero gradient. Our inlets, or we're going to make this front and back actually. Front and back. That's also zero gradient. Our inlet's going to be zero gradient. Our outlet will have a fixed value of zero, so that's good. And we can delete the rest of these. We'll save and exit. Now what? Um, let's see, transport properties. So um, we'll go into control dict and make sure that our uh, case setup is what we want it to be. So we've got an end time of 10. I'm going to increase that to 20 and drop this to 0.001. Change the write interval to 10. We'll turn on write compression just because I want to. It goes faster that way. And I'm going to add the option max CO, max current number, to be 1. Uh, these solvers really prefer if you have your current number to be uh, less than or equal to 1. And that happens because this runtime modifiable option is enabled. So if it notices that, if the code notices that your current number is going to be greater than 1, it will lower your, or, yeah, it will lower your time step so that um, your max current number never becomes greater than 1. So now I believe we are ready. So I'm going to run my mesh command. Uh, this won't take too long, but I'll cut to when this is over. Okay, so that's finished. Now, I believe we can run IcoFoam. So this is just for running it in parallel. If you're running this in serial, you can just type in IcoFoam. Alright, so we do get an error. What does it want? We forgot something critical. So within our it's asking for the different uh, processors want to talk to each other. So because we have six different uh, processor directories, it wants to communicate 0 to 2, 1 to 2, 2 to 0, and such and such. So we forgot something within our uh, 0 directories. So I'm just going to delete all the processor directories. And we're going to go into 0 U. Before all of this wall and stuff within our boundary field uh, section we're going to say include etsy case dicts set constraint type so that's going to include that within our uh, it's going to include those proc boundary 2 to 0 and such so we're going to do that for 0p as well Four. Oh my gosh. One more. One, two, three, four. Include at C case dicts slash set constraint types. All right. So if we do this again, oops. So, um, if you don't want to keep typing things over and over again, because likely you're going to come across errors like I do. I had a mesh file that I used dot slash mesh to run, but I want a run file that will mesh and run it. So what I'm going to do is cat mesh into run. And if I uh, nano run, we'll see that I have my mesh command here, but I'm going to delete this oversubscribe because it's redundant, does not need it. Then I'm going to go down here, MPI run, MP6, I go foam, what am I doing? Parallel. We'll save that. 
We're also going to have to make this an executable. So chmod h a plus x run dot slash run. And I will cut to when the meshing is over. And once the uh, I'll show you that the simulation should start. All right. So we see that it's starting now. Um, it's going through our um, iterations. We can see that our current number is shown, solving for p, solving for u. And this will take slightly longer than the meshing, so I will cut to when this is over and show you our results. Okay, so I've cut the simulation short because it was taking a while, and uh, we can create a foam file to view our results. Foam. We'll go to decompose case, apply. We'll do a slice, slice plane, z normal. And we can see how, oops, we can see how our, velo excuse me, velocity will develop in the flow. Play, there you go. Flow is moving from right to left. And we can confirm that by using glyphs. No scale array, we'll lower the scale on this really low. Apply, needs to be even lower it seems. Apply, the, too small. Apply, so clearly going from right to left. These glyphs won't change too much in time because, I don't know, it's relatively steady, even though it's a transient simulation, it's, the flow is fully developed by this point, so not much will change. And especially because this is a laminar simulation, so not not much variation in the flow. But uh, not too much more, not too much analysis can be uh, drawn from this. I don't really have a research question, or like um, I could probably see like if I reverse the flow, have it go from left to right, see um, how long it takes for like die to reach the end, or how long it takes for a a steady state sort of regime to be developed uh, depending on how flow enters from left to right or right to left uh, but in terms of getting a solution from geometry uh, this is basically the way to go just copy directories from open foam tutorials that you think are relevant to what you're doing uh, that are similar and then just adapt it to your case. Replace the patch names, replace the boundary conditions, and so on. Anyways, I hope this was helpful. Um, let me know if there's any more questions or if you'd like me to investigate something else. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.